Look at that. This is incredible. What kind of pain are you in? What's wrong with you? Broken collarbone. Broken collarbone? Yes, sir. Which one is it? This one, right here. Lord, there it is, putting it together right there. Mend this collarbone together. <laughs> And strike 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 and strike. Televangelists are a really interesting phenomenon, at least to me. I'm fascinated by televangelists. As someone who personally didn't grow up in a super religious household, of course I respect anyone's beliefs and I think that religion is something very personal, but as a complete outsider to the world of televangelists, they have always been really, really fascinating to me. I feel like televangelists are one of those things that are confusing to people outside of their world, yet they amass this cult-like following of admirers who listen Listen and hang on to everything they say and think that they're like the coolest thing in the world. For those who don't know, televangelists are ministers who broadcast or televise their primarily Christian teachings. The most infamous televangelists are known for taking their preachings to, to the next level, and they're kind of known for their showmanship and extravagant speeches. Wherever I go, God rules. When I walk on White House grounds, God walks on White House grounds. And some televangelists really, really take it too far, if you ask me at least. COVID-19! COVID-19! under which the Canadian office uh, is Shigama Te vrema on bo breve dis to cinema hantake in ge on do et genendo dog sisik pukukla na membre menesto the giants are coming the giants the spiritual giants are coming forth, saith the Lord. The giants. But televangelists all have one thing in common. The most popular televangelists are all able to amass a huge amount of following, fill up giant stadiums worth of people pre, you know, pre what we're going through right now, if you know what I mean and are able to make a fortune simply off of televising their preachings. And many televangelists lead such lavish and luxurious lifestyles because of the money they've been able to obtain through, of course, primarily tax-free donations to their church. Now, soliciting donations from church patrons seems like a problematic aspect, but televangelists have a great way of explaining this, and that's through teaching the prosperity gospel. Gospel, yeah. Dream for the best house. Dream for the best car. He's a pastor named Dollar who preaches the prosperity gospel. The more you give, the more you shall receive. Just because the world don't have it don't mean you can't have it. Giving. Yes, sir. You have to give so forth to get a harvest back. Fundamental can't be changed. To summarize, because this is definitely not a video on religion, which I am by far no expert in, prosperity theology or prosperity gospel is the belief that if you have faith, positive speech, and donate to religious organizations, that God will bless you not only physically, but also financially. So basically, if you do all the right things, you'll get that cash money. And for most televangelists, this is the explanation for why they're so rich. It's not because they're soliciting donations from vulnerable members of their organization. There will be 50 people give $1,000 
and do it right now, or I am finished. Now try me. But actually because God wanted them to be rich, they did everything right and they got a return on their investment into God. So you can too if you donate to them. You need to send in $3,500. You need to send in $35,000. You need to send in that $100,000 check. If you do not write that PO box and you do not call that toll free number and you do not become a ministry of sustainer, you will never see sustainment in your life and your dream will die. Your call will die. Right now. Right now, so a $1,000 sacrifice. And when he talks to you, I'm going to have you come down here and so a $1,000 in the Lord's work. Now, I'm telling you something. God already has placed that $1,000 in your hand. You have it someplace. And their success should not be further questioned than that. I know I'm talking in a really salty way right now, and I hope I don't offend anyone, but my channel is all about uncovering scams, and it does make me upset when I see people preying on the vulnerable, especially using their religious beliefs to prey on them. What are we gonna do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Now, I could probably talk on and on about televangelists because they're so interesting and fascinating to me, but there has been one televangelist in particular that has been popping off in recent years, saying some really fascinating stuff, kind of concerning stuff, and I feel like I need to talk about it. And this problematic televangelist's name is Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland is known for his over-the-top performances, bizarre speeches, and general scammery. I talked about Kenneth right when lockdown happened for his handling of that whole situation, if you know what I mean. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He received your healing Yes. Yeah, and by his stripes, I was healed. And by his stripes, I am healed now. I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed and the devil's trying to give me the flu. But he's done some shady things before then and after that moment and just seems to be getting worse and worse. And I feel like it needs to be addressed. But before we get into that, hi. My name is Madison. I cover scams and unethical business practices on my channel, so if you like deep dives and like to analyze, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. Also, check out my Patreon if you want to support this channel and get access to an exclusive Discord, as well as some exclusive content that I'm currently planning, like behind the scenes into how I make my videos and produce them. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video all on Kenneth. Copeland. Also, before we get into the video, I thought it'd probably be a good idea to define some keywords, I guess, that are gonna come up a lot in this video because I had no idea what any of this meant before researching and looking into it. Both the words tithing and seed mean donation when it comes to televangelists, and usually they're implying to donate to their church or their organization. And the words harvest, blessing, and prosper are all implying that if you donate to their church, you will be able to prosper financially, God will bless you, all that. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Kenneth Copeland has a fairly large following, but he didn't reach mainstream infamy until some of his clips started leaking out onto the internet. We'll exercise judgment right now. Because we In have- In the name of Jesus! Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, oh. Satan, you destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, 
You get off this nation. I demand judgment on you. I demand, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. I call you done. I call you done gone. You come down from your Amen. place of authority, destroyer. You come down and you crawl on your oh. belly like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head in the Garden of Eden. You will destroy through COVID-19. No more. No more. COVID-19. COVID-19. Burn. Oh, I'm telling you, it gets hot down there. I mean, like Jesse says, it's Africa hot down there, man. And it gets... <laughs> Are you listening to me? Because it's, it's right there on the coast. It gets muggy. And that's what it takes to kill this thing. Uh, it hates heat. It hates humidity. It hates water. <laughs> it just dies. I hollered at the top of my voice, in the name of Jesus, you get back up there where you belong. And whoosh, boy, up it went. Um, yeah. Yeah. I messed us up. Man, I love your eyes. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. If you, if you go into the Old Covenant, do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? Are you saying that Jewish people they appreciate well. money more than... No, really? They believe in wealth. Some that people is. would find that offensive. No, no, wait a minute now. So I think it's safe to say Kenneth Copeland has a lot of feelings to express. And he expresses them. He gets them out there, that's for sure. But beyond some of those really cringy clips, who is Kenneth Copeland, really? Kenneth Max Copeland was born December 6th of 1936, which means he is 83 years old. Kenneth Copeland is 83 years old. I mean, watching some of those clips, 83 years old, Dang, he's got a lot of energy and is doing well, I think. I don't know. His organization is called Kenneth Copeland Ministries, under which he televises his preachings. Why is it? I don't understand this. I, 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 and it plagued me and plagued me for years. I, I, why? Do I just preach and preach and preach and teach and teach and teach and lay hands on and, and we gather together? And so few people receive their healing. Kenneth Copeland is associated with the charismatic movement, a trend of mainstream Christian congregations adopting some beliefs and practices of the Pentecostal church. Though, of course, there are differences in the two beliefs, and this, once again, video is not a video analyzing religion, something I'm not an expert in. Kenneth also heavily promotes the prosperity gospel, stating that if you donate to his church, you will get a hundredfold on your investment. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. And now is the time to call for the return on your tithing and on your giving and your sowing over the years. Hallelujah, call for it. You have a right to it. It's laid up in your heavenly account. So giving him money is an investment into your future. 
Because of this teaching, Kenneth Copeland has a net worth of $300 million, almost all of which has come from tax-free donations to his church. For a pastor, you are living a life of luxury. You've got great homes, you've got great planes, you, you drive in limos. and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Yeah. And some and people I'm would not, say I'm that, is it, is it appreciated? May, may I add something to that? Uh, I, I, my wealth doesn't come from offerings alone. Because you sell things, books and DVDs. Yes. If you go on to the Kenneth Copeland Ministries website, you can see a lot of ways in which they try and get you to donate. You can go to the give portion of their website where they automatically have $50 highlighted to give to their church. And at the top, it says your seed sown will go to work immediately, transforming believers' lives worldwide. But another trickier way that they're able to get people to donate to their church is through their partnership. Becoming a partner is basically where you're agreeing to give money to the Kenneth Copeland Ministries on a consistent basis. And this is what they say about their partnership. Partnership is much more than being on a mail list. It is sacred to Kenneth Copeland. Why? Because partnership is a covenant, a joining together in faith. Partnership is like a bridge. It's the great connector that joins those who fund the work of the ministry with the work itself, and it is upheld by the two pillars of prayer and financial support. There we go. Financial support is when a partner commits to funding the work of the ministry with gifts, contributions, tithes, and offerings. Brother Copeland is quick to point out Philippians 4.17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may be abound to your account. Basically saying, if you give us money on a consistent basis, it'll prosper you or you will be the one that benefits from that, not us. What has Kenneth done with... Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. What has Kenneth done with all of these donations to his church? I'm sure he's, you know, passed it along, further donated to other organizations, you know, practiced what he preaches. Oh, no? Well, it looks like instead, Kenneth Copeland has largely spent the money that he has made through donations on lavish purchase items like private jets and big ass mansions. <laughs> but when it comes to luxurious travel, are you seeing this? I hope so. You bought it. <laughs> very few people can beat Kenneth Copeland. He even has his own airport next to his lovely mansion in Newark, Texas. Copeland actually has two private jets, a $20 million Citation 10 and a Gulfstream 5 jet that he recently bought from movie director Tyler Perry. He's flown his jets to his vacation ski resort in Steamboat Springs, Colorado at least 143 times since 2000. You know, the usual. Kenneth Copeland Ministries, also known as Eagle Mountain International Church, was also part of an investigation conducted by the Senate Finance Committee to determine whether or not televangelists like Kenneth Copeland are abusing their power or using the money donated to their church for personal reasons. The information prepared by Linda F. Simmons is super in-depth and super detailed, but the thing I find the most interesting are the salaries given out by the Kenneth Copeland Ministries. The family members of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland are paid pr a pretty large salary by the church, and it becomes fairly clear that really the church is being used as Gloria Copeland and Kenneth Copeland's personal piggy bank to pay out family members as well as their own personal expenses. The most problematic aspect of Kenneth Copeland isn't even necessary that he solicits donations for his own personal gain. It's more about who he solicits donations from and who he targets for his scheme. Because Kenneth Copeland and televangelists like him largely target vulnerable people and solicit donations from vulnerable demographics. The main targets of televangelist preachings are the poor, the uneducated, the elderly, and the sick. 
The poor make for perfect targets because televangelists largely preach the prosperity gospel, saying that God will bless you financially if you have faith and donate to them. Tithing protects the harvest. Praise God. Really, tithing is, a, is an insurance policy in the protection of our harvest. Well, the you, tithing is the open door to the blessing. Yes. And it's the blessing that God set forth that's going to meet your needs, give you what you need, bless you, keep you well, keep you prosperous. And so our tithing opens that door for God to move supernaturally. The poorer you are, the more desperate you are to be financially well off or at least able to survive. So you're more likely to donate to televangelists hoping that you will get a return on your investment. Poverty ruins. Yeah. It ruins. And that's what we don't want to do, mm -hmm. is to We're live in, go in poverty. We've been delivered from the curse of poverty. That's right. Yay! Yay. We're not going back there. And Glory you know something, God. Gloria, the, the spirit of poverty, it has a smell to it, has an odor to it. Uh, if you've ever been through different parts of a city that are run down and there are trash, there's trash everywhere, you can actually see poverty. You can see what it looks like. You can see what that spirit of poverty looks like. And it's something... It is a curse. Poverty it's a is curse. a curse. And it's something that you and the I... The Bible teaches that. By, the, by, by being redeemed from the curse, we have been redeemed Glory from that God. curse of poverty. Hallelujah. The uneducated are also perfect targets because they lack knowledge on how to prosper financially and the right avenues in which to prosper financially. So they're more likely to believe that this is a legitimate way to prosper financially and to gain money from this. Distracted by success before they realized it, Brian and Cindy found themselves trapped by growing debt. Without knowing it, I had turned my back on the principles that Kenneth and Gloria taught us about staying out of debt. And um, uh, I, w I woke up one morning and uh, I was head over heels in debt. We made a commitment that we were gonna become, come back to KCM and be partners and find out the keys to make this thing work. And God um, gave us a seed, uh, gave us a, an income tax refund it was eighty-three hundred. Eight thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars. Eighty-three ninety-seven. Yeah. And when that income tax refund check came to us, I I didn't have to pray about it. I didn't have to call my pastor and ask him. I didn't I didn't have to ask anybody. I knew that that was my that was my seed to get us out. And I just told Cindy, I said we're sending that to Kenneth Gilpin Ministries. Within six weeks of sowing this seed. Despite natural circumstances in a depressed economy, Brian and Cindy secured a contract on their home. I can testify that today that we, we have become faithful in tithing and it has made a difference. It's brought peace to our lives. I mean, it sounds like a nice idea, right? You have faith, you get something back for it. For those struggling, it's the answer they need to solve all their problems. The elderly and the sick are also perfect targets for televangelists because they promote this idea of God being able to cure you or even the televangelists themselves through their preachings being able to cure you of any ailments, illnesses, death, and disease. And these promises of outrageous cures to incurable things really qualm the anxiety of those who are either struggling with disease or constantly fear it. In the name of Jesus. Gloria, come around and get on the other side. Now you do just what I did, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is over. It's over. It is over. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I commend her body to be loose, yes, to be amen. free, to be healed, to be restored. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. To the top of her head, to the soles of her feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No, no bad symptoms. No me. sickness. No disease. Om brande sikle de bo Glory to God. Fingers. 
be loosed in the name of yeah, Jesus. Yeah, amen. Be normal in the yeah, name of Jesus. Amen. Work right in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Jesus gave her these fingers, and we call them healed. Yep. He gave her healed amen. fingers. Healed amen. fingers. Glory to amen. God. Healed body. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Unfortunately, there are a lot of stories of people who have lost a lot of money from televangelists because they believed in what televangelists call the seed, aka the donation, the money you have to send their church. The idea is you plant the seed by sending them money and then God allows you to grow and prosper even more and you get even more money coming your way. But for many, that has simply not been the case and they have sent and spent a lot of money and gotten no return, surprisingly, and Kenneth Copeland and others like him get to walk away with a private jet. What's Pastor Dollar's prosperity gospel really all about? What is it all about? It's about feeding him. It's about him eating. I'm gonna tell you whatever I need to tell you to get you to put money in my pocket. Those who are desperate for good fortune, who have been given a bad hand in life and who don't have very many options, those are the types who turn to televangelists like Kenneth Copeland as a last ditch effort or as their only hope. But does Kenneth Copeland himself even believe in what he's saying? It's hard to know for sure, but we can at least examine his actions to be able to tell. According to the Christian Post, Kenneth Copeland Ministries was criticized in 2010 for failing to fly disaster relief missions to Haiti after allegedly promising an aviation relief assistance program called Angel Flight 44. The Angel Flight 44 ministry was announced by Kenneth Copeland Ministries in 2006 and the ministry attempted to raise money to fund it. A spokesperson for Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Stephen Swisher, told the Christian Post this was not a specific promise with a timeline attached, and said that the money was spent on airplane repairs and that the airplane was not in airworthy condition and had structural issues. Like, yeah, we may have raised money for a charity to go help those in need in Haiti through flying an airplane over there. But we decided we didn't want to, and that's fine too, so get over it. Copeland Ministries has also allegedly contributed to the anti-vax rhetoric. At least 16 people linked to a megachurch northwest of Dallas have now contracted measles. Health officials say it began when a visitor brought the virus back from overseas. The ministry for the Eagle Mountain International Church is led by televangelist Kenneth Copeland, whose sermons, like this one you're about to see in June, have sounded pretty anti-vaccine in the past. Immunity. Vaccination. Spiritual induced immunity from sickness and disease. But also, in general, Copeland Ministries has contributed widely to the distrust in medicine. You can, of course, take all the things that Kenneth Copeland himself has said about COVID lately. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. According to the Word of God. According to the Word of God. I'm healed. Yes. The Word of the Lord came to me. So I, I jumped up, ran, got my notepad, and wrote it down. 924. This disease called CODV-19 will be over much sooner than you think. Christian people all over this country praying have overwhelmed it. Wow. That's dangerous, especially considering Kenneth Copeland himself is 83 years old, making him a perfect target for the virus. But also, I guarantee a lot of his listeners, watchers, and followers are also within a similar age range. There was a video of Gloria Copeland herself saying that doctors give patients poison that will make you sicker and that the church is an alternative to medicine treatment. 
Which do you want? Do you want to do that? Copeland asks of the doctor's poisonous treatment. Or do you want to sit here on a Saturday morning, hear the word of God, and let faith come into your heart and be healed? You've got time. You don't have time not to. You don't have time to sit in the doctor's office. You don't have time to stay at the hospital. So if you'll spend your time in the word of God or the banker's office, either if you'll spend your time in the word of god look at all the time you'll save glory to god you don't have time to try to live in the natural this is a crazy world this is a goofy world you don't have time to live like the world you get all messed up yourself kenneth copeland has also released a few very interesting prophecies the giants are coming the giants are coming the giants, the spiritual giants are coming forth, saith the Lord. Within recent times, a lot of his prophecies having to do with the Trump presidency, which is interesting considering what ended up happening in the election. The prophecies that happened with the Donald Trump would be elected. He was born on June 14th, 1946. That day was a blood moon. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. I say this in the book, too. But then if you take from the day of his birth and you go forward to the day that Israel was born, do you remember that date? May 14th, 1948? Yes. Yes. It's exactly 700 days. He See was, if you can work that out. <laughs> it makes, it, at least for me, it makes me go, hmm. Uh, listen, I, you can find it on the internet like I did. And the reason that's significant is these prophecies, which are all over YouTube, could not be manufactured. That's right. He's prophesying and he's talking about how God is, uh, uh, Trump is going to be a trumpet and that God is going to raise up a disruptor. Mm -hmm. And he says he's going to be in office for two terms. And of course, when news came out that Trump lost the election, Kenneth Copeland lost it. Like he just meltdown, he, serious meltdown. The media said Joe Biden's president. Ha 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 ha. On top of that, when questioned about his lavish lifestyle, Kenneth Copeland defended his lifestyle in the weirdest, and creepiest way. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry, and I didn't pay anywhere, and Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it, he made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. Again, getting back to the comment, you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. That's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And, and it works on you hard. It really does. So I, anyway, I, I wanted to make that clear so the devil can't lie to you and say, see there, them preachers spending yeah. all that money, this, this fat cat's riding around. And you have some fancy clothes. I mean, I for a pastor, you are living yes. a life of luxury. Yes, you've I got am. great homes. You've got yes, great planes. Do. You, you drive in limos. I'm a and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Yeah. To those critics that say that a preacher should not be living a life of luxury, what is your response to that? They're wrong. Interesting. Copeland's most entertaining but also scariest moments are his healing tangents that he goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Satan gave me this mess. I mean, it's a lie of the devil. I shouldn't have said that. This is something that a lot of televangelists do, yet you'll notice rarely are the visibly sick allowed to get on stage. What's wrong with you? Broken collarbone. Broken collarbone? Yes, sir. How long has it been that way? 
a uh, couple of days. Well, you've already Friday. took that thing off your back. Exactly. Which one is it? This one, right here. Lord, there it is, putting it together right there. Mend this collarbone together in, in the name of Jesus' bones. Go together. Now move it around. Start moving it around. Start thanking God. Who else in severe pain? You're in severe, I mean, I mean you're just, what kind of pain are you? This is best exemplified in the story of Benny Hinn, a televangelist, and Grace, a young girl with muscular dystrophy. calls them miracle crusades and as always Benny Hinn's appearance four years ago in Calgary was a finely tuned event. It all builds towards the miracle healing that Hinn maintains is channeled from God through him. The healing everyone here is waiting for. Fire on you! Fire! In November of 2004, the CBC television show The Fifth Estate did a special titled Do You Believe in Miracles on the apparent transgressions committed by Benny Hinn's ministry. With the aid of hidden cameras and a crusade of witnesses, the producers of the show demonstrated Hinn's apparent misappropriation of funds, his fabrication of the truth, and the way in which his staff chose crusade audience members to come on stage to proclaim their miracle healings. What you see on TV are the lucky ones allowed up on stage. But we found out how those people who actually meet Benny Hinn are chosen. In particular, the investigation highlighted the fact that the most desperate miracle seekers who attended Hinn's crusade, the quadriplegics, the brain damaged, virtually anyone with a visibly obvious physical condition, are never allowed up on stage. Those who attempt to get in the line of possible healings are intercepted and directed to return to their seats. How do they pick the ones they want to go on stage at that point? They have staff members that go through and give them a quick, uh, quick interview. And they'll ask them, Can you, you know, what's wrong with you? Oh, I've had uh, rheumatoid arthritis of my left shoulder. I can't lift it. All of a sudden, can you lift your shoulder? Because if you can't lift your shoulder, you can't go on stage. According to Andrew, the screening system has one purpose, to keep the truly sick or disabled away from Benny Hinn. At one Canadian service, hidden cameras showed a mother who was carrying her muscular dystrophy afflicted daughter, Grace, being stopped by two screeners when they attempted to get into line for a possible blessing from Hinn. Janice Brulot is a lifelong believer whose eight-year-old Grace couldn't walk because of a severe neuromuscular disorder. I said, you know, honey, we could stay up here because, you know what? I said, Jesus is up here. And she said, no, mommy. She said, I'd like to go down and see if Benny Hinn could pray for me. I said, are you sure? She said, yes, mommy. The screeners asked the mother if Grace had been healed. And when the mother replied in the negative, they were told to return to their seats. The pair got out of line, but Grace, wanting Pastor Brenny to pay for her, asked her mother to support her as she tried to walk as a show of her faith in action, according to the mother. Hoping for their miracle, they tried to make their way towards the stage, but they were intercepted by Hinn screeners, who ordered them to sit down. Grace and I moved over to the side. We sat and waited, and Grace asked me if I could help her to try and walk. And uh, that was kind of her faith in action. And uh, so I picked her up and we tried walking back and forth. And um, that was kind of a hard moment. After several unsuccessful attempts at walking, the pair left the arena in tears. Both mother and daughter visibly upset at being turned aside and crying as they explained to the undercover reporters that all Grace had wanted was for him to pray for her. But the staffers rushed them out of line when they found out Grace had not been healed. Just kept saying, is she healed? Is she healed? And like there was such a big like rush, like yeah. And, uh, what can I say? You know, she just wanted to pray for it. 
just knowing that people have hope and faith and then are just kind of walked all over or taken advantage of because of that is disgusting to me. And I truly feel like Kenneth Copeland and those like him must be stopped, especially when they have hurt and scammed so many people who just want to do good. I don't have too much else to say on this subject. I really don't know how many fans Kenneth Copeland has or if this video will get a bunch of hate because of the subject matter, but I felt like I needed to talk about it. I talk about so many scams and unethical practices, and I feel like this is a huge unethical thing and possibly scam that is going on and it breaks my heart and I just have to talk about it. So that's what I did and I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, have a good one.